Thanks for the invitation to join you this afternoon. It's been uh, fascinating for me as I transition from working on the broader development and poverty reduction challenges to have an opportunity to reconnect again uh, with mental health. And today's uh, uh, workshop, uh, the set of panels that we have heard uh, this afternoon, the range of activities that have been covered here uh, demonstrate how important the development of this field over the last two decades uh, has been and yet how significant and profound the challenges are to scaling up and uh, mobilizing, generating the resources that are needed uh, to meet the uh, persistent deep gap uh, in uh, services that continue to define uh, mental health uh, globally. Uh, I want to just talk for a moment about uh, what that means in terms of sustainability and financing. And, uh, reflecting uh, some on the experience of other fields of work and what has happened in the development agenda, uh, what that means uh, for thinking about uh, the capacity to generate the resources that are needed for mental health. When uh, we look at the way in which the field has grown in these years, and again, what has been represented here this afternoon in terms of the knowledge base, in terms of the experience in a number of countries, uh, the evidence uh, for uh, successful interventions, most of them still at a, a small scale, uh, and the growing engagement as a global field. I think that we see the elements that are needed to begin to talk about mental health in the broader agenda of development. Now, why is that important? Uh, I think that uh, we have heard very clearly today the set of challenges and different approaches that people have taken to build in this base of knowledge, capacity, evidence, uh, financing, etc. cetera. Uh, yet, uh, we know well that it's not enough to mobilize those resources and capacities at the local level, that the scale of the problem is not going to be solved simply through a process of mobilizing resources in very limited resource settings. And I, I think, again, we have heard very clearly from a number of the panelists the limitations limitations that the agenda confronts in terms of both stigma, uh, bias, lack of resources. And therefore, there is a need to better articulate how this work connects to the broader international commitments to development and the mobilization of resources that would enable that uh, a scale and uh, availability of resources to develop. And I would say in that sense that if we look at that challenge of a scale and sustainability, uh, we need to uh, uh, look at what are the different mechanisms that uh, can possibly be mobilized. And I think we uh, also have heard pieces of this, that fundamentally we're talking about mobilizing resources for what are defined as public goods, uh, and that in health is an important driver of public investment and public resource mobilization. We have also uh, heard uh, references to the fact that a rights-based approach uh, fundamentally relates to the mental health uh, agenda. And also there's been reference to market-based mechanisms and the sustainability related to market-based uh, financing. What combination of those rationales will eventually enable the growth of mental health uh, uh, services and the resources that uh, would uh, uh, allow for uh, scale and sustainability, I think is a critical question for the field going forward. And if we look at how that evolved in other fields of work, I think it's important uh, to reflect for a moment on what happened leading up to the establishment of a set of international commitments uh, to uh, both health and poverty reduction agendas. And I think uh, in that sense, it's important to look at, and I hope uh, in the discussion we can talk about, the moment at which we are. If we uh, recognize that fundamentally it was the Millennium Development Goals that established the international uh, community's commitment uh, to development assistance, uh, that shaped, in that sense, very significant Im investments over the last decade uh, that uh, define a transition in the approach to development that is uh, currently under review as the post-2015 agenda gets shaped. Uh, and fundamentally, that it is at a moment in which the uh, type of approaches and challenges that uh, characterize the mental health field have an opportunity to become part of that development agenda. So let me just explain quickly. Uh, the Millennium Development Goals emerge 
from a set of conversations that uh, developed in the 80s and 90s and led to the Millennium uh, Declaration, the Millennium Development Declaration. It was a combination of the agenda in the women's rights movement uh, that uh, emerged in Mexico City, uh, got consolidated in 95 in Beijing, uh, led uh, to a set of very specific targets on reproductive health and women's rights. Uh, it was the Rio agenda on sustainable development and the mechanisms that emerged from that sustainable development agenda on the climate change uh, convention, on the convention on sustainable development and agenda 21, mechanisms that mobilize resources that enable the fields that were present on the ground in a number of countries internationally, just like mental health is today, to get the international support that mobilized national resources, that moved the commitments from pilot cases, from small-scale interventions, to national programs, national budgets, national institutions, uh, and that today are taken for granted. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, the debt relief and the emergence of a broader uh, perspective, uh, it, basically the post-Washington consensus that has emerged in recent years that looks at the uh, development questions not so much in terms of safety nets and basic assistance to consumption, but begins to raise the issues of resilience and capacity uh, in communities to better manage the growing uh, challenges of development, uh, I think that we begin to see where these connections can be made. And I, I would say in that sense, in ending, that we have five trends in the development agenda today that are all supportive for the mental health field to become part of this uh, uh, global effort for development post-2015. First, we uh, know that this is uh, the urban century. For the first time, the world's population is over 50% living in cities, and it's very clear that the trend will continue and will accelerate, uh, will very rapidly uh, increase the demands on institutions, the formalization of services, and the emphasis on non-communicable diseases and the challenges of uh, resilience, particularly in a context of climate change. We know that uh, the discussion on poverty reduction has moved from safety nets to social protection and that health is fundamental to effective uh, social protection. Health is one of the main sources of financial insecurity, uh, the, the costs associated with lack uh, of coverage. And we have seen a very significant movement of innovation uh, uh, spearheaded by the uh, conditional cash transfers and microfinance, but now including universal health coverage. And again, the example of Mexico in implementing this is being replicated in quite a number of countries and leading to new sources of financing uh, that can include mental health. We also see in the post-2015 agenda a very clear emphasis in uh, focusing on health systems development and uh, moving away from the vertically integrated diseases-specific uh, interventions. Uh, and uh, we see, in that sense, uh, a recognition of a rights-based approach as fundamental to this post-2015 development agenda, and a focus on the persistent deep poverty that characterizes post-conflict uh, situations and uh, failed states. These five trends, if we look at them in relation to the sources of financing, and it's important to differentiate those sources all the way from uh, international NGOs to foundations to development agencies to the UN system to the multilateral development banks, creates a context in which we can begin to uh, speak about the ways in which international commitments, international agreements, uh, the force of this growing field of mental health can begin to link to those processes that ultimately will be fundamental to generating the national commitments and the national resources for service development. So uh, let me end with that and uh, hope that we can uh, take up some of these issues in the discussion.